Welcome, everybody. This is Lady Eva J, and welcome to Touch the World's True Serum. As you see, we did not play a three-minute intro today because I'm so excited to have our guests on this evening. Uh, we got the walking Bible in the house, y'all. The walking Bible is in the house. The one and only elder, Dwayne Lockridge. Uh, so we're going to just, we just going to do what we do. We're going to go ahead and start, bring him in. Uh, for those of you who are on live, go ahead and push the share button. Uh, for those of y'all who come in late, y'all just got to watch the repeat. Y'all should have known Eagle J going to start on time. So let's just go ahead and get this started. And let's bring on the walking Bible. Y'all ready? Let's do it. What's up, Elder Lockridge? Hey, what's going on, Lady <laughs> J? <laughs> now say your name right, because you know I didn't said your name. I didn't butcher your name for years. You talking about my last name? Yes. <laughs> I, you never noticed I butchered. Okay, say it again. Lawfridge, like yeah. cough uh -huh. with the C. Okay. You know, you know with, a, with an L and then Ridge, like bridge. So Lawfridge. Okay, so I can stop calling you Lockridge. I've been doing that for <laughs> Wait, listen, there's a whole group of people who have been doing that. And I'm like, oh my God. Hey, um, well, I, I admit when I'm wrong. You know what I'm saying? But see, but, see, but see, the difference with you is a lot of people have known me for down through the years. They've been knowing uh -huh. me. And I'm like, and then when they see the spelling of my name, I ask them all the time, where do you see a C and a K <laughs> in Lawbridge? I've been called many things, girl. I've been called Lutheridge. I've been called Lafridge. Uh, that's what the guy called my wife and I when we was at our reception. We got married. And uh -huh. he said, Dwayne and Kamisha Lafridge. I was like, Lafridge. I've been called Low Ride. Up the girls, but it's, <laughs> Come on, Low it's, Ride. <laughs> and wait a minute. And, and that was announced years ago. I was when I was a, at a testimonial church of God in Christ, and our youth choir had a big concert. Right. That's when Reginald Lee was over uh, the uh -huh. station and all his broadcast. And he said, Join Testimony Cathedral Church of God in Christ and the youth department with Elder Dwayne Lowride. I said, Low <laughs> Come on, Lowride. <laughs> Girl, I couldn't believe it. I said, Lowride. Ooh, yeah, I'm 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 a, I'm a, I'm gonna use that one day. We're gonna be at church and be like, what's up, low ride? <laughs> <laughs> well, why don't you do me a favor and, and go ahead and, and pray us in right quick, Doc? Sure, Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity on the true serum. God, we pray, God, that you will bless us in our conversation today. Lord, we don't know who's going to be listening. Father, some of her faithful followers, some that have never followed before, but Father, let us, whatever we do today, we wanted to do it in, in, in laughter, in joy, in love, and in truth, and in peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. So let's just go ahead and, um, let's just go ahead and get into this, uh, what we have on today. Um, first of all, why don't you uh, tell them a little bit of who you are, <laughs> where you came from, and, and, you know, some people may have think you just magically appeared, you know what I'm saying? But give them some history about uh, your ministry, you know, how it started. Just let them know who, who the elder is. Okay. Um, I started preaching pretty at the age of 16. Um, wasn't something that I wanted to do. Um, but the Lord called me to preach at the age of 16. I was going different places and people would prophesy and say all the time, you know, oh, Lafridge is, you know, he's a, you, you got the calling on your life, doc. And um, so I started preaching at 16. Uh, my dad's a preacher. Um, mm -hmm. I wasn't trying to be a preacher. I was trying to be an actor. That, that was my <laughs> goal. All that right. was my goal. I was very good uh, in high school. Shout out to my drama teacher, who I'm still close to now, Mom Olivia Hilburn from uh, L.A. Leroy Locke High School, where I graduated in 1989. So, you know, I've always, you know, I've won a lot of awards there and all of that. So I wasn't trying to be no preacher. You know, I didn't care about the prophetic words that was coming to people's lives to me. Uh, different time they would speak for it. So the Lord called me at the age well, he really called me before then, but I was like, Lord, do you really want me to do this now? I mean, I just got saved at 14. 
Right. You know, feel the Holy Ghost. Now I'm 16. You talking about preaching? Don't want to do it. And so, long story short, I accepted the calling. I preached my first message uh, on the, the which is ironic, I, April of 1988, mm -hmm. uh, April of 1988, uh, on a resurrection Sunday night. Mm. And my message was, uh, the spirit of the weeble wobble. <laughs> and, and so I've always been that type of person. I try to take current things and try to relate it into my messages. And so that's what I end up preaching because as a little kid, I had a weeble wobble and the slogan was the weebles wobble. But they don't fall don't down. Fall down. Mm -hmm. And so I will put a bunch of books on top of it and everything and hit it with my daddy's hammer and all that type of stuff. And no matter how it was chipped, no matter how it was beaten, no matter how many encyclopedias. And EJ, I'm talking about those old school encyclopedias, the big right. thick one. No matter how I put it on there, right. No matter how I put it on there, um, the next thing that happens is guess what? Boom, it pops back up. And so I right. use that um as a message. And so um so started preaching different places, um, still was in high school, living saved to the best of my ability. Um, got ordained under the late great bishop Benjamin Jerome Crouch of the Metro mm -hmm. Southern California Metropolitan Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction. Uh, which happens to be uh, Andre Sandra Crouch's dad. And um, right. when he ordained me, he called me the fireball. And so I got ordained underneath him at the age of 21. Um, from then on, like I said, just been going different places um, and preaching uh, the word the word, word of God. And so I love people. I love young people. Uh, it's always been my thing, uh, ministering to young people and all of that. Um I love God. Uh, I love people. I love integrity. I love character. Mm -hmm. um, I'm goofy. I like to have fun. You know, I almost started, girl, to put on the robe so everybody can see that I can be <laughs> funny. Too. Then take it off and be like, no, I'm not going to do that tonight. Um, but yeah, uh, let, me, let me and let me tell you something else a lot of people do not understand or probably don't know about me is the fact that ministry has made me uh, what people will call an extrovert. What you see yes. publicly is pretty not me, me privately. And, okay. and, my, and my wife would tell you that. Right. Uh, my, my wife would tell you that. And so, um, so yeah, she, she would, she would tell you that it's it, it just how I am. Um, you want to, a lot of people call me on the phone and they'd be like, are you there? I'm like, yeah, I'm there. Yeah. Well, you ain't saying nothing. You're not acting like you do at church, but well, that's church and that's right. ministry, you know, in a sense, pretty much who I really am to that, to that magnitude. I don't need a whole bunch of crowd of people around me and stuff like that, though I'm a crowd drawer and I appreciate it. And I thank God for that opportunity. Um, been through a lot, experienced a lot. Hey, Cookie. We go way back, girl. We go way Hey, Cookie. Back. We go way back, cookie. too. Hey, Cookie. <laughs> <laughs> cookie was like Mama Cookie back in the day when we were teenagers. It was her. Uh, right. Our good friend Candy back then. She was a Borden then until she got married and became an Abram. Um, but, yeah, she was Mother Borden. And that was Mother, mother Candy, Mother Abram, and Mother right. Dee. So, uh -huh. Yeah. But anyway, so, yeah, I hope I answered what you asked. Yes, you did. Now, let me ask you a question. How did you get the uh, the name The Walking Bible? I got the name The Walking Bible uh, from my <laughs> friend, the one and only, the late great Bishop Anthony P.G. Singer. That's oh, where that Papa. That's, that's, that's who gave me that name. Um, he, he gave me that name, and um, he started calling me that. And um, because it was like, if you want to know, ask Lafridge. And yeah. so, like, I was like, oh, cut, cut that out. And so they was they would say they was they would set me up. Leslie Anthony, he would set me up. And then he would, I would ask me questions. They not God, not such 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 man. And this was happening, man. And what you think about it? And then I would start talking, and then I'll be like, "What? Well, you know, the word God says about this. It says da 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 da." -da. And then right. I'll keep going, and so then he'll start laughing, and he'd be like, "See, Doc, that's why I call you the Walking Bible, Doc, <laughs> because no matter what you say, Doc, boy, it's coming out of your mouth. You can't help it." 
And so right. that you know, Henry calls me that. Uh, my boy Eric Cooper called me that. We was in a group years ago called the Ecclesia. And so okay. it consisted of uh Bishop Anthony Fiji uh singer, uh Prophet Henry Fiji, um, myself, Dwayne Johnson, uh Eric Cooper, and then we had one wonderful lady in the bunch, and that was Evangelist Regina Peter. So who right. Anthony is how I came about with that name from him, the walking Bible. And so, yeah, because the, the walking Bible for me in my life was mm -hmm. my godfather, which was Robert Ray Cole, the, the, okay. the pastor who used to be the pastor before he transitioned, um, which is the pastor of Crusaders Temple, Church of God in Christ, where my god brother Patrick, Patrick Cole is now the pastor, but he was the walking Bible. Uh, and I learned that from him. I learned it from my dad. As far as, you know, that uh, I would take the time to, um, you know, being in a te teenager and not going to always have the Bible on me, I made it my business to be like, okay, if somebody was to ask me a question, why do you believe this? Why do you believe that as a Christian? You know, I would spend hours on top of hours trying to learn what the word of the Lord says so that when somebody asks me a question, you know, if it's in the word, I'm going to share it. Um, right. It may not say thou shall not this. Um, yeah. It may not say thou can do this. But if it gave me the principle, I would show principles if it didn't literally say what they was asking me. And so even now, my kids be like, you just got a scripture for everything. It's not yeah. intentional. It's not intentional, so to speak, but it's the fact that how I, I, I raise myself. What if I'm out and about and somebody asks me a question? I want right. to be, take seriously the scripture that says, give a reason of the hope that lies on the inside in First Tim, uh, First Peter 3.15. You know, somebody asks me, I want to be able. Now, that don't mean they're going to agree, but I still want to be able to express. And then I was charged by watching Jewish people, how they would drill the word of God in their young people, like chapters. So I made right. it my, I said, okay, well, Romans 2 says I'm an inward Jew, so let me try. So I would spend hours on top of hours trying to learn passages of scripture. I just shared with my youngest daughter, I said, you know, not too long ago, I would spend a lot of time uh, at Locke. They had me do, have a dream speech. And li literally, Lady Eva J, I tried to learn the whole speech by memory with and because I was able to do that. And I was able to do that. And I can't remember it now. See, that Holy Ghost had to bring all that back. To my memory. <laughs> I was able to remember the whole speech. And it mesmerized the principle because it's like, we didn't want you to learn the whole thing. We didn't want you to learn the excerpts. But I right. spent hours and days because I wanted to do justice to right. the thing. And so photographic memory has been a big thing for me. So that's pretty much how that whole walking Bible thing came about. Well, well, people better get used to it because it may be a day when we're going to have our Bibles. So you got to make sure you got it in you. You know yes. what I'm saying? Yes, ma'am. So, you know, I, I called you on a truth serum. I don't call everybody to the truth serum because everybody won't tell the truth. So I called you to the truth serum because I know you're going to give me the truth. You know, I, I, I watch your page, you know, I, I watch you from afar and you do operate in integrity and, and character. And that's something that's really uh, huge right now, especially in the season that we're going on right now, because people are looking for the truth. Um, I look at your page a lot and I just I see you going in and I see you going in. And I'm like, he's not afraid of questions of of the meat of what's really going on. Um, you have a segment on your page. What is this? What is the title of the segment that you do on your page from time to time? A lot of people call it the the, the mind of Lawford. That's pretty what they end up calling it. Um, mm -hmm. That was given to me. Like how that came about, sis, was um, one day, you know, on the top of the Facebook, it says, what's on your mind, right? Mm -hmm. And so I started talking and I would put something and then I would just say, okay, oh, let me tell people what's on my mind today. And I will put it up there. And so all of a sudden I started getting, I, so I did it that day and I did it another day. And then somebody reached out and it was like, um, where are you? And I was like, at home or wherever I was. And it was like, you, you didn't do the mind of Lawfridge. 
And I was like, you know, I said, huh? You, 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 you didn't tell us what was on your mind today. And so I was like, what? And so that's how it started. So then it was like, well, okay. So when they we started able to do like the Facebook lives, so people thought, well, can you do a live about that? Da, 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 da? I was like, sure, I'll go ahead and do it. Listen, I went, I've changed this name so many times. I've went from Word Up to, uh, forgot the other one that I did, um, that I changed it. And so recently, and even though it's still the mind of Lawfridge, um, a friend of mine, Johnny, Th Pastor Johnny Thompson, um, he says, he says, are you sitting at a table when you're doing what you're doing? I said, normally, he says, wow. He said, because the topics you be talking about, man, it's like you at the table. He said, man, that's the ministry of the table. And I was mm. like, mm. and so that's why lately I changed it to, because I'm sitting at, a, at my that table now, mm. I changed it to the ministry of the table. And so on Friday, mm. normally from Monday, I have a segment where I do, can we talk? Can we talk? I'm not really, you know, going, you know, really, it's it's like scripture, not scripture type ordeal. Mm -hmm. Fridays, I try to do what is called straight talk Friday. You know, it just, mm -hmm. let's straight, what's on your mind? Let's talk about it. Let's go there. Whether, you know, it's not, it's not something that I'm sitting there like, okay, Lord, what do you want me to say today type deal? It just, let's just talk about it. But for the most part, for the ministry of the table, it just, things that people reach out to me and they said, well, can you address this? And can you talk about this? And what's your thoughts on this? And what's your perspective on this? And, you know, so I'll give my perspective and I always try, especially when it's people asking me from a Christian perspective, you know, I try to give them the word of the Lord. I never right. want to come subjective, you right. know, I never is that a subjective viewpoint? I want to be very objective and and not be biased with my things. And I tell people all the time, if I don't know the answer, I'll tell you I don't know. But give me, depending on what the topic is, I may tell them, give me a day, give me a week. Depending on the severity of the topic, give me a month. Because I don't ever want to come on and just say something because I understand, you know, nothing I ask for, but I understand the influence that I have. And yeah. I don't want to use my platform that the Lord has given me in this facet to deter anybody. So, right. and therefore there's the, the mind of Lafridge. Okay. So speaking of topics, we talked about something a little earlier and I asked you, what was your, I guess not what was your favorite topic, but what was your, um, the topic that you got more, um, more interest from oh you know recently it's because i've done the the sex the sexually active saints topic lord deliver mm -hmm. me um mm -hmm. that one was like i was um looking at one of my boxes that have many things i've done many years ago mm -hmm. and as i was looking at it uh i found this um what I want to call it, this this teaching that I did years ago, specifically for singles. And mm -hmm. so I said, you know what? I said, Lord, and, and my mind was somewhere else. And um, I'm trying my best even in these days to condition myself, but I'm one of those that I really want to, God, I want to do this, but is this what you want me to do now? And what is, what ended up occurring is the spirit of the Lord said, you will do this topic. I'm thinking, I'm just going to do day one on it. Right. It was like, can you come back and do it again? And I was like, um, okay. You know, and questions started coming in in regards to it. Because even though it's amazing about God, even though he gave you something many years ago, many years ago to do something, it's prevalent to some people right now. It helped yeah. some singles. It was helping some divorcees. It was helping people uh, who was dealing with issues in their present marriage. And they would ask questions. You know, what do you feel about this and all of this? And then it led into uh, some other, you know, topics. And then, you know, I'll go into prayer on the situation, if that makes sense. Okay. So, so here we go. Let me, let me get comfortable here. Well, Jesus. What? <laughs> <laughs> you, you Why do you? 
The judge, judge, judge. Whenever I move my chair, I'm about to get, I'm about to go there. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, you know, hey, it is what it is. So, why do you think saints don't like to talk about sex? Well, I would say some of them because of the time in which they come from. There was mm -hmm. an era, but they did not address it. They did not talk about it. They did not address it. Um, they didn't have those topics. Uh, they didn't want to. <laughs> they didn't want to have those discussions. They didn't want to talk about it. Um, you know, there were some things they just keep private. Don't say anything. As time mm -hmm. progressed on, um, as time progressed on, then you have those who only want to deal with certain sexual topics, but they don't want to deal with all of them. You know what I'm saying? We'll, we'll deal with homosexuality. We'll deal with mm -hmm. adultery. We'll deal with what we know as fornication, but we won't talk about those mm -hmm. who are addicted to porn. We won't talk about child molesters. We won't talk about pedophilia. Mm -hmm. We won't discuss those other topics that are, 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 are key and binding to a lot of people. And so we'll just deal with the, the, the surface stuff. We deal with the iceberg of everything. But there's some stuff that folks are dealing with, you know, that has produced something in them that they don't want to, that, that, that they're dealing with. And we have to address it in the house of God. You can't, you know, I'm, I'm raised in a Pentecostal holiness environment. I yeah. also, and there's some stuff oil's not going to do. There's some. <laughs> Say that again, please. Because I don't think they <laughs> heard you behind me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> there's some things oil is not going to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's some oil's not going to do. I believe there's two levels of deliverance. Some people deliver at the altar. And I saw some people are not going to like this, but oh well. Some people deliver at the altar and somebody else delivers on the couch. Well. Some people need to talk their way into a deliverance. Yeah. What do you have for that? Okay. A lot of times we quote James chapter 5, verse 16, and we will quote the latter part of it. What's the latter part? The effectual fervent prayer of the rights of development. We shout on that. But let's yeah. deal with the first portion of that, of that verse. It says, confess your faults. Now, in the original translation, it says, confess your sins one for another, mm -hmm. pray for one another, and you shall be healed. The problem with some people, you let somebody get up in church and say, oh my God, I'm, <laughs> I'm struggling with fornication. You know, I'm deal I'm struggling, or I got I, my sin, my name is Dwayne Lawford and I'm a fornicator, all right? We'll, we'll pray for you. Oh, my, my, let somebody say, my, Dwayne, my name is Dwayne Lawford and I'm a molester. All of a sudden, we're going to look strange and awkward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm that that person is dealing with, and we have to deal. We we want sometimes even Jay look like sometimes we. A, a, a preacher said this, and uh, I'll say his name, uh, Bishop Earl Carter. He said something as as in spite of how controversial he is. He said something. He says, "How can we cleanse the leper if we are leper ourselves?" Mm. Mm. And, he, and here's what the challenge is. Some people are not going to deal with the topic because they are the topic of discussion. Ooh, true, Sam. Y'all take there's it, a, take it, take it. <laughs> there's a topic of the discussion. So they're not going to say certain things because they are in whatever they're discussing. Uh -huh. And so uh -huh. they're certain things because they're in it. They won't speak on certain things. They won't touch certain topics. They'll touch a sex topic, but they won't touch gluttony. Mm. Come on. Just, now, why you do you know, think we, that is? Be, because it's easier to deal with external stuff than the internal stuff that we're driven by. Got it. Mm -hmm. It's easy. If it's a popular thing, when the last time, when have you heard somebody preach on... Um, when you heard somebody preach on gluttony and have an altar call for gluttony, Never. you don't normally see it. You're not gonna see it. Yeah, yeah. You're not gonna you're not you're not gonna see it. I did I talked about gluttony some time ago. And I told people, in a sense, I was operating as a gluttony. 
And and because here, here it was, I was sneaking, eating ice cream after hours. Me too. I was eating candy after hours. And then me when too. my wife would say to me, you know, you need to stop eating the ice, you know, uh, getting upset <laughs> because the, the candy wrappers was in my pockets falling out. Evidence. And I didn't have that before I went to bed. So you said right. to me, and so some people don't even don't realize that sometimes, here we go, we move from one addiction if we're not careful to another. Yeah, yeah. So you're yeah. not a sex addict no more, but now you are an emotional eater. Mm. And so you be loosing that butter pecan at midnight at one o'clock. <laughs> That butter pecan is calling you because you're not dealing with those particular issues. So I think we, we don't want to deal with those type of discussions. But some people, their issue is not sex, it's food. Some people's issue is not food, nor sex, it's pride. So mm. Now, for those of you who just tuned in, <clears throat> this is the walking Bible. If y'all didn't come here for the truth, y'all may want to just turn the dial. Uh, we are going to open up the... Uh, the stage for comments and everything, but we have a lot to get through today. Uh, we left off with talking about, you know, why some saints, let me say not saints, but some saints right. don't want to talk about sex. And the reason why we uh, got on that topic is because a uh, brother and I was sharing earlier uh, one of his topics that he was, um, that he was talking on. Uh, give them, give them the title of that topic for those that don't watch the oh. page. Uh, the title is, Sexually active saints with question marks. Lord deliver. Lord L A W D deliver me. <laughs> now, what kind of uh? I can't even call it backlash. What kind of uh? Questions arose from that topic. Um. One particular question in particular was when the husband is making, causing the wife to not feel loved and sexual because he's not having sex with her. And mm. what do I do in that situation? Because she was feeling like I'm not worthy. She was, and he's not speaking certain ways. And he's, and he was a gentleman who did not want to talk to anybody. And I know him personally. Right. Um, and he didn't want to talk to nobody. It's like, you know, I said, she said, well, I mentioned you. I said, but did you mention him on this wise? You know, and, and because we need that this discussion because something is going on in his mind if and in his life that all of a sudden he who was active is no longer active. And let me say this. I don't always subscribe to the fact that just because he or she is not active with you sexually, that they're somewhere else. That's not always the case. Sometimes that man is going through something emotionally and mental. And what some of us men do, we we are shut down in different ways. We are close out ourselves in different ways. And so I was telling her, you know, well, let, let's see if he, you know, he knows me. Let's see if he's willing to have a conversation. But in the meantime, you know, don't you dare feel you're not worthy. Because a lot of times, the a lot of people feel, well, you know, he's not thinking he's worthy. And then we become, we become um, unfaithful emotionally. We, ain't had, we didn't have sex with anybody, but emotionally we've tied ourselves to another person. We've wrapped ourselves to another person because emotionally we're not getting it from our spouse. Emotionally we're not getting it. So we'll find ourselves um, messed up by he's not giving it. So I'm not having sex with this guy. I'm not having sex with this woman. It's the fact she's giving me emotional support. And so sometimes emotionally, you'll, you'll stop doing things sexually because you didn't attract it yourself or attach rather yourself to what you want, which is a healthy thing, which is the emotional connection, but you're not getting it. And so I talked to her on, on that level and um, told her, you know, continue to encourage him, talk to him, see what's going on, you know, keep throwing people that, you know, he would trust, he trusts into his face and, and bring it before him, you know, okay. accidentally. Uh, I didn't tell her this, but I think, you know, and I've told another person who had an issue with their husband, I said, accidentally play me talking about it. Just put it in your phone and walk around and then I'll start talking. 
I said, and just ask me the question and then give me some time to start talking so he won't know that I'm literally talking about him. And that's what somebody did. Their husband mm. ended up hearing me and they reached out and I was like, oh my God, thank you so much. Because ever since he heard what you said, he started revisiting some things in his life. So, I, you know, I have people, Lady Evil, that I've never met that live in other states, live in right. other states. Never met them. You know, they saw me going live. They saw a topic. They started following me and boom, I got a family that follows me. I've never met them. They live in Virginia. I don't know these people, but they followed me and they listened to what I had to say. So that, that those things are very honorable to me. So, yeah. Hmm. Well, I'm a, um, <clears throat> I'm not going to move my chair this time, but every time I start rubbing my fingers, you know, I'm <laughs> <laughs> um okay for for our young people you know this is a, a different generation i'm you know i'm i'm caught in the middle uh i just turned 51 but my grandmother the late pastor eva may whitey grace was a pastor uh my mom who was on here she gave birth to me when i was 17 during a time where you had to stand before the church you know and you know I'm pregnant you know repent you know kind of thing um, how can we, how can I say this? I'll just say it like this. How can we get our young people to talk to us about things that they're going through if we don't share what we've gone through? Is that even possible? Uh, here's the deal. One of the things I honestly believe that we have problems with is we've raised a generation of people. Mm -hmm. Hey, lady, hey, we've raised uh, a generation of people um, who feel that if I don't know your dirt, if I don't mm -hmm. know your your pain, you can't relate to me. That right. that's seems like or here's the new thing if if you don't know my truth then you can't relate to me and the issue is it's not always necessarily opening up myself because i think what the issue with a lot of people to some people are transparent but that but not transforming because Given me, do you understand? If you really understand the the definition of transparency, you can't see into me. Watch this: where there is no light, mm. you don't call something in the dark transparent because you can't see it. So, right. in order for something to be transparent, something has to be lit. There has mm -hmm. to be light in order to see what you're being transparent about right so as right. you being transparent about it then there ought to be a transformation don't just show me how much dirt you were in show me how you got out of the dirt or how you're yes. navigating through whatever and that i believe that's where the issue is i don't think this this generation of young people they don't want the fake they want the truth yes they, they they want the they, they 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 want the truth. You see what I'm saying? They they want the truth, and where there is no truth, that's where the issue come in. Show me, show me what you're telling me about how you live. The, the the scripture told us this is Matthew five and sixteen. It it didn't say let your darkness shine before men. Mm -mm. It said let your light, light shine before men that they may see your good works. Yeah, good works. And glorify the Father. Ephesians 5 tells us there are some things we're not even supposed to expose. Some mm. stuff don't need to be said. Some stuff don't need to be said. And so is there a sense of us that they need to know that we've gone through? Yes. They, they need to know we've experienced some things. But at the same time, my connection with you is not my mess, but my love. Not my struggle, but 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 my wholeness and how God has and how God is yet keeping me. And that's where the challenge is, you know, because I remember, man, Lady J, I remember uh when 
being a virgin was honorable. Right. If you look the fool now, if you a virgin, <laughs> they question if you're gay, is something wrong yeah. with you. You know, is she is is, is, is she a lesbian? You know, right. what's wrong with her? The, right. it, it used to be honorable. It's not honorable. Right. What was considered honorable is dishonorable, and what was considered dishonorable is now honorable. So it's like, wow. So it's almost like, you know, and, and the Lord had to really get a hold to me because I was like, Lord, I've been preaching all these many years. I said, look like I can't get to nobody's door. I'm tired of these prof prophetic words. The Lord going to do this. The Lord, I'm sick of it because when I look at TV, I said, oh, so that's what I got to do. So I got to be a whore like him. I got to <laughs> cheat on my wife like that one. I got to right. steal money. I got to screw boys and girls. Right. And right. then, ooh, he's connected. Because he has, here we go, I can relate to him because he has sin in his life. Here's, mm. the, defeat. Here's the defeat of that. The person who we serve as Christians was tempted at all points, yet without sin, but you yet serve Jesus. Yeah. He was a hundred percent man and a hundred percent God. So the issue is, are you looking for wholeness or are you looking for somebody to relate to in the area of your, of your struggle or your sin alone? Or are you looking for somebody that can help you? What is that? First Corinthians six and such were some of you. Mm. We need both. I always say it. When I pass through a church, let me tell you, you and being raised in the Church of God in Christ, uh, mm -hmm. being raised in God in Christ, we have purity class and we have all these different things. I always said, if I'm going to have somebody with my purity class, I said they they gonna look at me like I'm crazy, but I'm gonna have somebody that used to be non-virgin, maybe a prostitute, because yeah. sometimes we only associate purity with what we do with our body, but. But I often tell people there's no condom for the mind. <laughs> well, <laughs> I that's a t-shirt, Doc. <laughs> Y'all can't take it because this is live and it's on YouTube and I'm going to send him this clip. He can just upload it. It's already copywritten. So y'all can just uh, don't put that on no shirt. Y'all y'all going to be in trouble. <laughs> Woo! There is no condom for the mind. Whoa. Well, check this out. Here's here's a question that's probably going to make some folks mad, but it's already folks mad at me, so I really don't care. That's why this is called the truth serum. Do you think in this pandemic that is going on that some of the Christian's true character and integrity is being revealed to the world? I think some. Um, I think so. But then I also... Um, Thank you, John. Thank you, John. <laughs> um, I also think um, that I'll say it this way. Since we done this since the truth serum, I'll say it this way. And that is <laughs> and that is the fact of whoever you were before the pandemic is who you will be in the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And if you don't change in the pandemic, you'll still be who you were before, during, and after. It mm. who, so if people say, Oh, my marriage is a struggle, my kids is this, and my 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 job is this, it was that before the pandemic. It's just the fact that the pandemic has has brought a little bit more of challenges, if you will, to it. And so some people, you know, I believe I'm a firm believer that I believe sometimes and it's not a Bible verse, but they say it often that. You know, warning comes before destruction. I believe God a lot of times gives us all an escape goat out of a situation. And if we don't, he will reveal us to people. Is that always the case? Not always the case. Um, and so I think there are times he will. Uh, it will show us who we who people are. But more importantly, who are we? Sometimes, you know, we're good for. But. 
as I heard somebody say years ago, as when you're pointing one finger at others, you got about three or four pointing back at you. Mm -hmm. So you have to be very careful uh, in that. But I believe it's showing us not just the, the, the negative. There are some people who this season has produced entrepreneurship out of them. It yeah. has produced the, the creatives out of them. There were some people who got laid off, but even though they got laid off, something else was birthed in them. And some people are looking at it as, oh my, this was a bad situation, while somebody else is saying, this brought something out of me, not for the negative, but for something positive that has transformed many people's lives. So I think in some aspects, for some it was a negative situation, and for others, the positive situations, because it's brought them to a place of of soundness it brought them to a place of I have no time to do anything else because I can't do anything else so now my mindset is here I also believe this Lady Eva J I also believe this pandemic stopped the side pieces because they couldn't get together. you better say that they didn't want to get that COVID they're like let me stay at home and and and, and that was the warning before destruction, though. That that was that was the warning. You said something a minute ago uh, about you didn't have time to do anything else. I I looked at the pandemic, and some people you be like, "Oh, she crazy." Well, yeah, I'm a little bit. I am. Um, had this pandemic not happened, Eva J probably wouldn't have been still. I was so busy running around. Doing this, doing that, doing this, doing that. But God said, I've been telling you to be still so I can show you what to do. Yes. So now that you're not, you have to be still. Yes. I've been in such a peace, a state of peace lately that it's like, I mean, when is the last time people just really had time to just go to the beach on a Monday? That's what I decided to do today. I decided to leave the desk, go to the beach, stay gone until about 3.30. And then come in and talk to my bro on the truth serum. Where do where they do that at? Where they, where they do that at? So right. it gave me a gave me time to really find out who who is Eva? Who did God call me to be? You know, stop spending so much time doing this when I'm trying to instruct you to do this. It gave me some quiet time to move in silence. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And, and for me, and for me, it brought another, it, it calls my younger children and I to be even more close. Mm -hmm. it, got, it gave them an opportunity to um, really, really, really see that the thought pattern of, oh, he's not this, he's not approachable in this aspect. Like, no, he really is. Like, because of how I am about a lot of things. And so it's like, wow. So mm -hmm. it, it, it brought in a lot of things. It made, you know, you know, because sometimes you don't see certain things, you know, and I don't care how prophetic I operate in and all of that type of stuff. There's some things I tell people you don't need the profit for when, when you have a child that would say, dad, da, 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 da. You know, and right. I was like, oh, I didn't realize that was happening. So I had to shift some stuff. You know what I mean? I have to I have to shift some things to be like, okay, I wasn't aware of that because I'm one of those who still feel to this day, thank God is not in my house. But I'm one of those that say, Lord, I don't want to be so busy saving others and then I lose my own. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that that's that that's that thing. And so that that's been a wonderful thing. Uh my youngest daughter who she's been, you know, she's an excellent um, uh, artists. Um, I try to push that. Uh, my son is an excellent uh, basketball player. We try to push these things. My other daughter, uh, Keitri, she's recently did, uh, you know, in this season, she's um, started her key herbs, you know, uh, doing the holistic approach of things. Jess was featured at a pop-up this past Saturday. It's birthed a lot of things. I realized my wife and I realized that all of our kids, the one I biologically have, the ones I've personally raised since they was little kids to being grown people now, 
there's creativeness in them. And I believe in yeah. this season, we have to push those things. Keep yeah. pushing. We kind of keep it. Soraya, is it, do this, Soraya. No, no, I can do that. No, let, let, let's do it. Let's do it. You know what I'm saying? Let's push yeah. it. Do this because even recently, um, you know, she uh, was telling me how she had recently uh, made a decision to try to pray more. And so mm -hmm. I didn't respond the way she expected because right. she was going to be like, oh, yeah, she prays, she prays. I didn't want to <laughs> yeah. say this show. You know what right. I'm saying? I wanted to know. I don't want you to think because you're doing, here we go, watch this truth come out. I don't want you because you're doing spiritual things that when you're doing natural things, you can't get excited. So I didn't want to over push it because I don't want to think, see, you got excited over the, the, the spiritual thing, but not this. You see what I'm saying? And sometimes right. in the church, we have pushed our children to a place of, I don't want to deal with God because we we will drive them spiritually, but not drive them naturally. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Well, since we're on the subject of children, um, let, let's talk about uh, the Kirk Franklin situation. OK. Um, how do you feel about that? Be, being a father, uh, being a man of God, but also just being a human being. Um, What's what's your what's your voice on that? My first take, uh, first thing, first thing I'm going to say is this: Kurt Franklin to me did not owe anybody an apology because right. it was a recording that his son released. Mm -hmm. I, in the words of, and I'm thinking about probably doing a topic on this or even a message on this, what I'm getting ready to say now. And that's what the, our supervisor of women, uh, shout out to our supervisor of women of the Church of God in Christ, Mother Barbara McCool Lewis. Um, she says, some things are just family business. Yeah. And we wouldn't have known. So if, it, if, he, if he was going to apologize to anybody, he apologized to his son, Carry On. Right. Now, as far as both of them are concerned, to me, both are in error. Both are wrong. Number one, because everybody keeps talking, even they keep saying, well, he disrespected his father. Outside of the tape being exposed, what else did y'all hear that I didn't hear? Like, <laughs> how do you determine from that that he was being disrespectful? Now, right. I can tell because of how Kurt Franklin was upset and going off and using profanity and all of that, I can tell that he got stirred up. But if you pay attention to that, you, he was, as they say, gaslighting his daddy. You can tell that he knew how to get to him. He yeah, knew. The buttons. Mm -hmm. he, knew how to, he knew how to push that button. So yeah. my thing is, he was, carry on was wrong because he made a decision to bring to light a private matter. Now, right. when Kurt Frank was on Tamron Hall show, a select amount of people are already aware of what was going on for many years right. because of you know the inner circle. But the right. challenge is, my issue with Carrie on is, is was and is this. Why didn't you give us all of the conversation, not just the part where your daddy is going off. What right. led up to that? What caused him to go off the way he went off? You know, right. all of us have, may have had a moment where, and let me say this, all all Christians, and I wish y'all stopped lying, all Christians <laughs> don't You know what I'm saying? Right. So, right. I guess when people generalize everybody, everybody right. No, you may cuss. See, me, I come from a cussing past. That's right. why I, eat. I believe that's why I speak in tongues so much. <laughs> I, Tell the truth, I, sir. I believe, I believe the Lord filled me with the Holy Spirit <laughs> in tongues so that I won't cuss. Yes. I, I can't speak for nobody else. And I tell people all the time, every preacher I know if it ain't cussing, they got a sharp tongue and they speak in tongues a lot. Yeah. I said that to say I don't subscribe <laughs> to that either. You know, 
I, you know, what I'm saying? I, don't, I don't subscribe to that craziness, that foolishness, that just because you know. So we we've had moments where we go off and we upset, right. and we go mm -hmm. and see. The other thing that bothered me about that the Kurt Frank situation is the the amount of people who made the statement like he's thirty three, he ain't six, he's not sixteen, he's not eighteen, he's a grown man. Well, my deal is this: I don't care if he was a grown man or not. That's still his son. And the yeah. words that were being articulated were not wholesome words. Right. And I and I'm not gonna subscribe to the fact of using I'm I'm human as an excuse to do wrong. Because let's forget that we're Christians for a moment. Is if so the next time somebody slaps you across the face because they mad at you, don't hit them back because they're human. <laughs> Next time, wife, sleep with your husband, have sex with them. Don't go try to fight them. Don't try to divorce your wife. Just say they're being human. <laughs> hmm. See, we Eva, when we want to use our humanity for stuff. And I have a problem with that. What we need to be praying for is and I may get in trouble for this because it's about to be on YouTube, but you call it the truth sermon. I don't know no else be me. <laughs> I had a problem, Chris. I had a major problem. I had a major problem in my heart. Even talking about it now, my heart. I watch different gospel artists mm -hmm. go on Kurt Franklin's page and say, Be encouraged, Kurt. We got you, boy. We know what's up. Lady Lexi. Under Carry On's comment, told him take that ass down. Now here's my issue: How come nobody did what Myron Williams, the praise and worship leader, did? How come none of those gospel artists who was that I know of? Because I went, I ain't gonna play with you. I went and looked at the comments because I wanted to see all you that was over here supporting Kirk and encouraging him, and you should encourage him, and you should hold him accountable. But what about the ones who went to his son? Lexi gonna tell him take that S down. She gonna mm. tell him, how come nobody did like Myron Williams? This is not the way to do it, man. This is not how you're supposed to do it. Let's talk. Let's see what I can do to help you. I honor that. Yeah. Because many times it appears, Lady EJ, when it comes to people in the industry, in the pulpit, in church, there's certain things we gotta cover them no matter what. I yeah. don't mind. But I don't want to condone either. Who's right. going to say to him? Let's find out. When I saw that, I would have been, if I had Kurt Franklin's number, I'm like, bro, let's talk. What's going on? What What's the issue? Especially if it's something we've all come to know and, and yeah. it's been casted. And then if Carry On don't care nothing about it, well, lady, why is he still posting stuff? Right. Why are you still, you know what I'm saying? If you're going to be done with it, be done with it. Why are you yeah. posting stuff? Why is stuff still going up? Even a recent situation that's up, that that Larry Reed is is have a person on the show because somebody's accusing him of molestation. His son is accusing him allegedly of molestation. Okay, wh why? Why? Right. right. Why, why do you give the whole truth that you are having issues with your mama too? I mean, now your mama's defending him. You're mad at your mama. If we're gonna do it, let's do it correctly. So right. some needs to bring all of them together. And if we're going to do it, it's not a time for us to pick sides. It's time no. to pray that fathers and sons need to come together. Whatever this issue is, if there's something mental going on in his life, it'll be foolish for Kurt Franklin to treat his son the way he's treating him coming from a person whose father he just reunited with not too long ago and not too long after reuniting with his daddy, his biological father died. So why would I want to put you in a, in a place of emptiness? Why would I? So, so maybe that's going back to what you said earlier. Maybe that's something Kurt Frank needs to deal with right. in himself that I'm right. more angry at my child that is off as hate. But some people feel that he should just turn away from his child. He said, I'm not turning away from my child. That's my son. No matter what he said, no matter what he has done, that's my child. And at the end of the day, that's what we're supposed to be. We're about how we're going to preach and sing minister about reconciliation and don't try to make a reconciliation. Now, there's one thing if I can't help my child. That's one thing if I can't help him. 
It's one thing if I came to the system and he or she don't want it. It's one thing if I'm the abusive parent, because I feel like this, if there's something that was to come out that would validate what Carrie on is saying, somebody needs to jump and be like, Kurt, let's get it together. The reason why you, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? We all, all these songs that you've written, now we got to come back to the father and let's help the situation. Take a hiatus and, and deal with your child. But according to him, you know what I'm saying? Um, according to him, he's made efforts. They've been going to counseling for years. He mentioned a guy yeah. named uh, John Drummond when he was on Tamron. I looked at John, John Drummond's words. He knows, he says he doesn't side with either one of them. They're both wrong. I'm not going to side with either one. I just think that people, we need to get out of other people's business to the perspective when we're looking at it. And one other thing, and I'll stop right here on this, uh, unless you have further questions. One of the issues I have in this generation, and this was messing up so much, and when I say this generation, I'm not talking about millennials, just this generation period, this era, this age, this aeon we're living in. Too many of us are spending too much time subliminally and openly blasting on social media. Yes. Yes. I I'll often wonder what, what 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 happened to picking up the telephone and 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 saying, you know, I have a problem, you know, or or just going to your brother or your sister and say, look, can we get this straight? You know, uh I, I don't get it. The the world is watching us. And they're they're sitting back laughing at us like <laughs> this is why I don't go to church. This is why I we're giving this just any kind of excuse, you know. To not be uh, us, and some of them, us. and some of them, lady, but they ain't coming to church. They don't want to come to church. That part, I remember years ago when it was a lot of preachers that were caught up in so much foolishness, mm -hmm. and. My cousin said, that's why I don't go to church now. Because preachers are this and preachers are that. And preacher, preacher. So I looked at him and, and I said, sir, is that your uncle? <laughs> Coward soldiers. Come on, John. Uh, he's, I said, I said, is that your uncle? I said, is that me? Well, no, you different. I said, so don't say all preachers. Right. There's some people who have big mega churches and they're living integral lives. Yeah. I'm not going to. And then there, and say, I don't like that when people get big, they're on the scale of like a, a Bishop T.D. Jakes or a Michael Todd or a, uh, um, what's the other guy I like? Um, a Rich Wicker, Wilkerson. And they assume because they got a big major church, you know, that ain't no integrity up in that church, ain't no character in that church. And then you think because you got a smaller church that you got integrity. No. There, there's, there are people who lack integrity in both segments. <laughs> so you can't mm. determine because the church is large that there's no integrity, there's no holiness teaching, and then look at a smaller church because that's a lie that was told years ago, and that's why they confuse people. The the poorer you were is the more closer you are to God. Twenty years, thirty years later, the richer you are is the more you to God. So now the people who are poor say, "Well, I don't have faith with God no more." Rich people are saying, well, I don't got no favor because they say the, the poor you are is the more you have a relationship with God. And so somebody lied. Yeah. Somebody, somebody lied. did. Yeah. Somebody lied because the favor of God is not based upon my riches. It's not based upon the wealth. Matter of fact, glory to God, Luke 12, 15 declares, beware of covetousness for a man's life does not consist in the abundance of things that he has. Too many people are too caught up. And maybe this is that season in, in life uh, where whatever's going on in the lives of people made like a Kurt Franklin and they carry on, these things got to come together. Because here's my deal. And I said this not too long ago. Here's my personal issue. While we're worrying about Kurt Franklin and Gary Hunt, how about these pastors? How about these pastors who have sons that they don't claim? Cause they're in a new relationship. Well, how, how about that? How about the fathers who are pastoring other children or they're mentoring other children, but they won't do anything with their own. 
How about the mother who is looking at their son and saying, you ain't going to be like your deadbeat daddy. You ain't going to be that. Now, you may not be cussing the way Kurt Franklin was, but you're not speaking wise words. You're not. You're, you're never beating up there. You calling your daughter a hoe? You, you, you calling, I'm about to rock the boat. You calling your son a fag? Mm -hmm. You calling him a sissy? You calling him, you calling her you, you all these derogatory names and, and and but you want to go after Kurt Franklin that is public, but the stuff that you're saying to your children in private is a problem. Yes. yes. The Bible says that to get rid of all foolish talking. How you going see people want to quote all day, honor your mother and father, that your days may be long upon the earth. But can y'all keep reading in Ephesians chapter six where he says, Fathers provoke not your children to wrath? That part. You don't have no business provoking them to anger, provoking your son to anger. He will, yeah. he coming to the church. You know that's your son, but your wife don't know that you had a son because you ain't never mentioned it. What's up with that? But they want to talk about that. I told y'all it's the truth, Sarah. Don't stay here if you don't want to know the truth. So what would you what would you say before we get out of here? We're gonna have to have a part two. You're gonna have to check your check your calendar for the first or the second Monday and you let me know uh when we can come back. Uh next week we have yeah. Dr. Tawana Worlds. Uh next week. That's gonna be a good one too. Um, okay. what <laughs> Lady Rita said that right there. <laughs> what 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 would you um like to leave the people on today what you know whatever is in in your spirit i want the people to understand that god is still on the throne that god is able don't lose your hope don't lose your faith don't lose your grip keep your eyes on him for the lord himself it's coming in your storm. He's coming to visit you right where you are in your situation. Do not allow what you are seeing in this world to be a distraction. Don't allow the foolishness that is happening in and outside of the church to be a distraction. The Lord wants you to look at, look on him. I hear in the book of Second Chronicles chapter 20, the, 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 the king's Jehoshaphat declared, our eyes are on you. Though the enemy is around us, our eyes are on him. I need somebody to understand, don't you dare lose your focus. Don't you dare lose your grip. Don't you dare throw in the towel. I know it's difficult. I know it's hard. I know you at a point of breaking down, but the spirit of the Lord wants you to know that he is with you. He has not abandoned you. He has not forsaken you. Though it appears that way, though it feels that way, he is in the midst. And as I've been telling people, I hear it now. You need to declare that no matter what I'm in, I'm not going to be consumed by what I'm in. See, you want God to deliver you out, but I preach that God is a sustainer. God is a sustainer. You will not lose it. He's going to keep you. Daniel went into the lion's den, but God kept him while he was in the lion's den. Can I tell somebody under the sound of my voice that the people who try to consume you are going to be consumed by what they threw you in. And the glory of God, is going to bring you to a place of prominence. You don't have to fight. God shall shut the lion's mouth. The L-I-O-N apostrophe S and the L-Y-I-N-G. Catch me. He's going to shut the lion's mouth. You just have to hold on to God. You just have to, yeah, God, you have to be quiet and let him fight for you. You have to let him fight. I keep hearing that. You will not be consumed, but those who have tried to consume you in it will be consumed. And you give glory and honor to God. And he is going to fight the battle. Oh, I hear Exodus 15 and 3. The Bible declares that the Lord is a man of war. He know how to fight. You ain't got to fight. God bless you. Ooh, well, let me tell you right there. You, you you didn't hit nobody else on today, darling. You hit Eva J. Because this, this season right here, I had to kind of tilt my head and say, 
Okay, look, look, check it out, God. I, I need you right now because I wanted to go backwards a few weeks ago. Not all the way, but I just wanted to just lay a few hands. <laughs> so I thank you for that. Some that way. But here's the deal. Yeah. What God brings into a place is a place of maturity in our lives. Mm -hmm. And you're touching people that some folks will never touch. You're yeah. touching them. That there's, it's not by happenstance he gave you the word touch the world. Mm -hmm. The world is not just church. Yeah. You have a, yeah, I said that way. You have a secular slash religious influence. There were many things that you were developed in and um, at a younger age and growing up that pushed who you are now. Who you are now, God pushed you here. He didn't want to be yeah. in the forefront, but he had to push you to a place to allow you to understand that what was rejecting you, take the R off, was ejecting you. Mm. <laughs> Sometimes wow. all you need is a change, the removal or the exchange of a letter. If you take yeah. if you take the I out of bitter and put an E in it, what do you get? Better. So yeah. that, that, you see what I'm saying? And so sometimes when we're moving in the places of God, we're moving in things of God, the enemy's assignment is to try to deter us. And yeah. just when we try to get us that way, something greater is around the corner. And yeah. I've been saying this for the longest. I've been saying it for the longest. The dam is broken and yeah. the blessings are flowing my way. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, to let them know uh, what days and times again that you do some of your uh, sessions. I know sometimes you uh, you pop on, but let them know, you know, what days and times you come on to do your uh, to do your lessons, to do your truths. <laughs> oh. Normally, it's a uh, Monday through Friday. Uh -huh. I try my best to do nine p.m. Um, nightly, that's the goal. Always to do 9 p.m. Uh, ministry on the table. Sometimes it doesn't happen. Sometimes uh, the family, um, come on, preach, Pastor John. Uh, sometimes, you know, the family is going to take precedence over a situation. Um, so a lot of times, I'm going to say, some, a lot of times they're going to take precedence, especially if it's a, it, a serious situation or something that we have to uh, attend to. Um, but more, majority of the time, from Monday through Friday, um, it's going to be 9, 9 p.m. Ministry of the Table. If you catch me on a Saturday, if you catch me on a Sunday, it's it's like um, what you call that? Um, spe a special, you know, on CNN's uh, special, special news. Yeah. Special it's a special edition. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's a special edition. So, yeah. Hey, hey mama, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I, didn't I had know to put that there. one up there. Hey, mamas is always watching. Let me say it right now. <laughs> they always watching. Uh, will, Listen, will you be on tonight yeah. or you going to take a break tonight? You're going to be on tonight or you're going to take a break tonight? You know what? I, because I did not come on Friday, I'm probably going to come on tonight because <laughs> I didn't come on Friday. Okay. All. all right. Yeah. I, got, I got time to go eat my little piece of veggie pizza and I'm going to come yeah. on back and tune in tonight. <laughs> Please come here. Yeah. Um, because real quickly, shameless plug. Come, come. Uh -huh. real quick. This is you all right. Put your head down a little bit. This is my daughter, y'all. Hello. Is that this the one is, that's doing the holistic stuff? Yes. yes. This is her. I'ma need you, darling. I'ma need you, darling. I'ma need you, darling. Yeah. <laughs> so she's the reason why on Friday I did mm -hmm. and I didn't say anything, you know, because she was making preparations. And I was like, I got that people. Who's straight talk? I was like, bump it. We just watch movies, and then she did everything. So yeah. So this is the girl, y'all. Key herbs. Hello. Y'all reach out to my yeah. daughter. Yeah. We're gonna need your information. So when this is over, go back to your daddy's page. Put your information in the uh in the comments, and then uh, Mama Eva got an assignment for you. You ready to take it on? Yes. Give me a sixty second voice memo of okay. your business and okay. send it to me within seven days i'm gonna put some music behind it and i'm gonna put it on the radio for two months thank you <laughs> i appreciate
appreciate you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Yes. Okay. Thank so <laughs> make, <laughs> make, make, make sure I get that. Now if you now if you get it to me before Sunday, it'll be on this Sunday. But you got seven okay. days. So take your time. 60 seconds. Okay. And then if you got some music that you want to put, some royalty free music, you know, go on YouTube and say royalty free jazzy music or royalty free mellow music or pick something out, send them to me. I got you. Awesome. Thank you. I appreciate you so much. You got <laughs> <Thank> it. <laughs> Bye, y'all. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Lady Eva J. Appreciate you, girl. I love you. For those of you guys who uh want to tune in with us next week, next week we will have uh Dr. Tawana. World, 6 p.m. next week. Y'all catch uh, Elder tonight. I know I'm going to catch it. I'm going to take a little break. And uh, yeah, I'm going to tune in. I love you, bro. I love you too. April, if you want me to come back April 12th, let's do it. Oh, he'll be back April 12th, y'all. Y'all don't miss out on it. Stay right there uh, for a second, uh, 30 seconds. Don't go nowhere, uh, bro. I'll see y'all okay. next week, though. Okay. <laughs>